The horrifying transformation of Doja Cat. Yeah? Ooh, let's watch, bro. Doja Cat has evolved from a bubbly pink pop princess to an edgy, dark, and honestly confusing <laughs> artist. Now, celebrities as famous as Doja Cat are held to standards that are near impossible to meet. But what happens when a celebrity just gives up, disregards all societal <laughs> standards, and starts acting in a way where you have no idea if what you are looking at <laughs> is real or fake? We have to acknowledge from the beginning that everything in Doja Cat's career could be one orchestrated marketing stunt, or we could actually be witnessing someone descending. Yeah, I can't. Madness. Bro, Doja Cat's superpower is that she knows the internet very well. She knows what type of humor the internet will gravitate to. She knows what will cause controversy, Hell and she no. has continuously exploited that throughout her career. Jesus, I pray for everybody watching, and Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, yes sir. Here, she obtained this knowledge by being essentially raised by the internet. I definitely didn't like to leave my room. I don't know if I was a agoraphobic, but I definitely thought that I was at the time. It was very, very hard for me to go outside. According to Doja, she would skip school for days at a time, spending endless hours in various online chat rooms. She claims that she was often right. a victim of online bullying, but this allowed her to develop a thick skin and join in on the fun through her own offensive rhetoric. So I became the person who would often make offensive jokes and do things sort of out of the box. From the slapstick comedy of Ebom's world to the hyperconnectivity of MySpace, as well as the edgy, politically incorrect depths of 4 Chan, Doja developed a fascination oh, with internet culture. Culture, but this time in her life would later come back to haunt her. I was very into finding underground artists that rapped. It was maybe around 11th grade that I figured that this is what I really wanted to do. Performing and music was all I ever cared about. She eventually dropped out of school at 16 and spent all of her free time making music and sharing it online. Her track So High was uploaded November of 2012, 11 which would years eventually ago? change her life. The only time Doja would leave her house was to network with other musicians in the underground LA scene. Verbies, a rapper, promoter, and radio host in LA, helped book Doja's first ever show at an event he founded dubbed The Banana Showcase. He like, your highness, why you always buying that fly sh why you gotta check them tyrants? And why you shut it down like hydrants? Although most of you know Doja as a pop star, she was initially trying to be a rapper. When they were developing her, I was like a live Ooh. performance coach and rap coach, Verbies recalled. I would play her hella hip hop videos and we'd freestyle. She was phenomenal. She didn't really need me, but I just happened to be there. Yeti Beats was a producer that heard so high and was blown away. He connected Doja with industry executives, resulting in Doja signing with Kimosabe Records, Bro. an imprint of RCA Records founded by record producer and songwriter Dr. Luke while she was just 17 years old. I would never sign. I'm not going to lie to you. I ain't signing with no one, bro, unless they got a bag. Unless they got a crazy bag. Yo, these, these motherfucking artists be getting fucked, dude. Holy, they get fucked. It's terrible, chat. These deals are bad. This deal also came with a temporary artist management partnership with Rock Nation. Through Kimo Sabe, Doja released her debut EP, Her, with the track So High being re-released as her solo commercial debut single. It seemed like Doja was about to explode into the mainstream, but signing with Dr. Luke was a mistake she could have never foreseen. Uh -oh. In 2014, Dr. Luke gained widespread media attention after Kesha filed a lawsuit against him. She accused oh. Dr. Luke of sexual, physical, and emotional abuse over the course of several years, starting when she was 18. She also claimed that Dr. Luke was intentionally sabotaging her career. Kesha also sought to be released from her recording contract with Kimo Sabe Records. This case was huge news, with hashtag free Kesha becoming a movement on social media. Coincidentally, Doja Cat's career came to a screeching halt as soon as Kesha's lawsuit was filed. Rapper Wale wanted to take Doja on his 30-city Simply Nothing tour across the USA, giving her some much-needed exposure to a mainstream audience, but she had to pull out because she didn't have the support of her label. Now, Doja never made any allegations against Dr. Luke, but is it a stretch to assume that Dr. Luke was more focused on fighting this lawsuit than helping his new signee with uh -oh. her career? Because Doja took a three-and-a-half-year break from releasing music. In the music industry, they call this being shelved, which is when a label signs you, holds you in a contract, but doesn't do anything to help your career, Damn. metaphorically putting you on a shelf to collect dust. She kept money rolling in by doing whatever live performance is possible, like doing a mini tour with The Felius London in 2015, as well as a short tour with Lizzo in 2017. Doja even turned down a feature on Billie Eilish's 2017. Are we still mad at Lizzo, chat? Is cancel culture still mad at Lizzo? Cause she was fat shaming her fat um dancers. And, and since she was fat shaming her fat dancers, can I fat shame her? Can I open up? Can, can I start tearing into her? No. Kenji laugh my ass off. What bro? I was asking. No, yes. Kenji, no. Yes. No, Kenji.
2017 hit single, Bellyache. Fans would see Doja often on Periscope Live. Cause By the way, it was a joke, YouTube comments. I already know they're fucking, there's 17 comments in a thread just talking about, oh my God. Yo, chat, if you ever look at the YouTube comments, oh my fuck. God, they're brain dead. We're, we'll go check out some some YouTube comments, but they are stupid. Holy shit! Sometimes they just be talking about the dumbest shit that has nothing to do. Like, okay, there we watched um, I, I think it was like um, there they were having a discussion if uh, in the YouTube comments if um disabled people they said oh disabled people are cute, and then another person was like disabled people aren't um aren't like a zoo or whatever the fuck, and then the other person was like I'm not saying they're a zoo. They they should they're not. It was like some stupid shit. and it was like not like i'm scrolling down this and i'm like what the fuck i saw that you guys saw that and i'm like what the fuck are they talking about they're just dumb bro youtube comments are just stupid sometimes bro holy shit looking up songs in her bedroom but she had no intentions on releasing them until 2018 her comeback in 2018 involved her ditching the rapper career path and aesthetic she instead Okay, okay, next time you just be like, yo, they yapping, bro. Don't say hella yapping. That's crazy. That that sounds wild. I'm gonna say it for you how you just said it so you know, okay? Man, they be hella yapping. You hear you hear how that sounds? Don't fing do that again, dude. She instead followed the typical pop star formula of selling sex through music. She debuted tracks like Roll With Us, Go to Town, and Candy along with her 13-track album, Amala. But a lot of these songs fell on deaf ears. Kimosabe Records didn't do any marketing for her, didn't get her interviews, nor were they putting her on major festivals. She was watching her career fly by and reached a moment where she had nothing left to lose. One night on an Instagram Live with her core group of uh -oh. 60 fans watching, she made a master- Damn, 60? Holy shit. She blew up. Chat, just goes, li listen, try your best. And if you don't succeed, leave your f company and then try your best again you understand a piece meme that would change her life producer troy noka sent her a sample of west montgomery's polka dots and moonbeams asking her to make a beat for his album at the time she'd just received a cow costume in the mail doja hopped on instagram live and began writing moo with her fans Six hours later, Doja and her fans wrote a song about her being a cow. But the silly song needed a silly music video. I opened up Photo Booth. I'm not gonna lie. The only reason why I watched this music video, bro, was the titties. If I'm being honest with you, I'm gonna be, on, I'm gonna be fucking so honest. Them titties was in that little ass suit. Bro, fuck the song. I don't, bitch, I'm a cow. I wasn't listening to none of that shit. I'm not gonna lie to you. I laughing my ass off. Kenji question mark. Bro, did you see the titties bouncing? That's all I'm saying. My laptop and use the green screen feature with a green sheet that I hadn't used Kenji, since I was what? 12. That was buried in the depths of my closet. I tacked it when to this a wall shit with dropped, a hammer bro? right over my mirror and used some LED Christmas lights to light everything. The crappy lighting and terrible quality green screen combined with a song that is intentionally bad was the perfect thing to release in summer of 2018. When we were at the peak of the Lil Pump, Bad Baby, Lil Xan, Boom Gang, Whoa Vicky, Supreme Patty, Lil Tay, Instagram clout wave, <laughs> Doja Cat's Moo music video fit right in this universe because people thought she was just a new quirky YouTuber who had a green screen and got bored. The music video for Moo garnered over 5 million views in two weeks and went extremely viral on every social media platform. But when people looked deeper, they realized she was an extremely extremely talented pop mm. artist with a record deal who had an entire album she just released a few months ago. Most people who go viral are not ready for a full-blown music career. Doja was more prepared than ever, and she was able to immediately capitalize on it. But first, she had to make some apologies. Some of her old uh -oh. tweets resurfaced of her using the F slur, to which she immediately responded by admitting she has used the word over 15,000 times in her life, then saying, I don't think I hate gay people. Gay is okay. Obviously, this didn't go over well, and she issued a more- I don't- I don't think I do. <laughs> I don't- I don't know. I don't think I had a lot of inter interactions. I mean, I don't know. I don't think I did. But once I was in a Starbucks, I don't know. It just came out of me. I don't know what happened, but I don't think- I don't think I do. <laughs> what the fuck? Formal apology the next day. This had no impact impact on her career and momentum, but it would not be the last time she would have to apologize for her past. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Uh, I think it's corny when people bring up old shit. I think the internet was so different back then, bro. I think it's so corny when people bring up old shit. It's like, who fucking cares? If we're being honest, chat, if we're being honest, I feel like it's like, whatever. But at the same time, I mean, it really depends. It really depends. But if if it was like 2015 and back, yo, who fucking cares, bro? Like, move, dude, move. Depends. I think, I think it depends. Well, Trippy, I already know you're already. Trippy, you're so caught up in fucking cancellation and cancel culture, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. You're, you're kind of
kind of corny with that shit. You know what I mean? But regardless, I think, uh, I think if it if it's like, I want to say if it's like almost five to 10 years ago, bro, you feel me? I genuinely believe people can change. Excuse, Trippy, I see you on Twitter. You be yapping, uh, you be hella yapping on Twitter. You be yapping, uh, you know what I mean? Same, I hate cancel culture. Um, it depends, like, if you are still doing, uh, the same shit you are doing. True, 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 true. You be hella yapping, uh. Now that she went viral on her own, her label decided to support her. She embarked wow. on a 23 city tour one month later and was finally getting interviews from Billboard, Genius, and Vlad TV. She rolled out a big single alongside Rico Nasty called Tia Tamara, which maintained a lighthearted and fun approach to her music. Doja understood that fans love the satire and goofiness of Moo, but she ultimately wanted to be taken seriously as a musician. A lot of artists that blow up off memes have a hard time being taken seriously, but the music industry was craving more female talent and Doja was ready to fill that niche. Her debut single, Juicy, alongside Tyga, debuted at number 83 on the Hot 100, her first entry on the charts. It would eventually peak at number 43 due to various TikTok trends associated with the track. Her second studio album, Hot Pink, was an overtly girly, bubbly, sexy record that complemented her fun energy while still remaining professional. So Say So wasn't rolled out as a single, but sparked a dance trend on TikTok. All the biggest influencers like Charlie D'Amelio and James Charles helped skyrocket this song. The popularity prompted a remix featuring Nicki Minaj. As it gained steam, she tweeted, If Say So hits number one, I'll show you guys my boobs really hard. This tweet made headlines. I remember this, and she didn't show the boobies. She didn't show the boobies, and, and, and people canceled her for it. <laughs> Yo, I remember because there's grown-ass men on my Twitter, bro. <laughs> Mad as <laughs> what the fuck, bro? You have two kids, <laughs> two different baby mamas. Go fucking do something. What the fuck are you doing? Some making fun of her desperation to go number one, but then it worked. Say So peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and achieved a Guinness World Record for the first female rap duo to reach number one on the U.S. Singles Chart. I just realized I have to show my boobs real hard. Uh, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I did play you. I'm not showing my boobs real hard, man. You got f***ing played. People online were furious that she broke her promise. She's messing with the simps. Trust me, the simps will overpower her and eventually expose something bad about her. This commenter couldn't have been more right. A few days Damn. later, a Twitter user resurfaced an old video of Doja in what they claimed was an alt-right chat room. How the f***? Yo, two seconds later, bro. <laughs> no titties. Oh, you f***ing asked for it, lady. Expose. On a website called Tiny Chat, Doja is seen wiggling and writhing while making sexual noises and advances towards other people in the chat before dropping the hard R. Her shirt reminds me of a baby Not only was she acting really strange, but the other people on the call were using blatantly racist rhetoric. This was Doja's response. In this video, I'm being completely f***ing blackout drunk and completely f***ing dumb. In regards to people being racist in the chat room, this was her response. You know what I do understand is that there is racism that happens across tiny chat. And there is racism that happens across Instagram. There's racism that happens across Twitter. This sh happens everywhere. It just happens more on tiny chat because it's not as monitored. When you see racist on tiny chat, it's because people aren't paying attention. I've seen it and I've I I know that I've been targeted by it, but the narrative that it's a white supremacist chat is completely incorrect. But it didn't stop there. Fans also discovered a 2015 song Doja recorded called Din Do Nuffin. Din Do Nuffin is a racist term that originated on poll, which is an abbreviation for politically incorrect. Yikes. Correct. An anonymous board on 4chan dedicated to current events and political discussion. This board has a reputation as a breeding ground for fringe beliefs and unapologetically grotesque takes. The term Din Do Nuffin is derived from the phrase didn't do- I'm gonna be honest, bro. I just feel like 4chan is just like- there's like a certain demographic that uses 4chan, bro, for sure. You know what I mean? And they probably all look the same. You know what I mean? Big. You know what I mean? Sloppy. Oh, 
I mean, I love corn balls, bro. You feel me? If we have anyone in here that uses 4chan, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I, I'm being so dead, like, bro, you gotta get a hobby, dude. Get off that shit, please. This is coming from a motherfucker using this ugly ass model in a VTuber. Get off that, bro. All right, it's not a good look. What's 4chan? Don't go looking it up. Heavenly told me about it, bro. Heavenly told me about that shit. He's like, you don't know what 4chan is? And then told me it was just a cesspool of fucking yeesh. Get off that, bro. Get off that, bro. Get a life, bro. Go fuck. I want to say go fuck some bitches. Clip your fingernails and get the dirt under them. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you just dirty. You just, you a dirt neck. You feel worse than Tumblr? I don't know, bro. It's a certain demographic. It's a bunch of weirdos. It's like where all the, you know, you know, where like all the little bullied ass kids go. You feel me? Like, you, you know, them, them weird motherfuckers that be Naruto running in the hallways and just creepy as shit in class. Like that's when they grow up, they go to 4chan. You see what I'm saying? Do nothing. A plea of innocence often used in reference to unarmed black men killed by police. The term was used to mock and criticize the black community during the Black Lives Matter protests. Hashtags like Doja Cat is over party and only clans began trending on Twitter. People believe only that the clans chat room video crazy. and controversial song indicated a pattern of Doja's racist behavior. Not long after these conversations started, Doja issued a formal apology in which she acknowledged her involvement in the chat rooms, but also debunked- The weird white kids that show you gore and confuse why you not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, they're like, "Look at this guy get decapitated! Isn't this funny?" I'm like, get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Your fucking mother doesn't love you. Get the fuck out of here. The narrative that she's anti-black. She also jumped on an Instagram live for 30 minutes, where she gave a concise explanation. When I used it, it was because I was in chat rooms all the time, and I was kind of locked away, and I was always on there just dealing with people coming at me left and right, talking about different slanderous terms after another. The term that I used in the song uh, is one that I learned that day. So people were calling me at left and right, left and right, and I used it in a song. And it was to kind of like where are your parents i'm not gonna lie bro motherfuckers in chat rooms how old was she when she was in those chat rooms that is crazy take back and 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 just say you to those people but again this would not be the last time doja's internet past would come back to haunt her Fortunately for Doja, her ever-growing list of accomplishments shined bright over any controversy she endured. Although her Hot Pink tour was postponed, she performed at the 2020 MTV Music Awards where she won the award for Best New Artist. Following performances on both The Tonight Show and Jimmy Kimmel Live, her feature on the album track Motive from Ariana Grande's 2020 album Positions peaked at number 32 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, becoming both her highest debut and second ever Top 40 entry. Later that year, Doja performed at the 2020 MTV Europe Music Awards, where she won the award for Best New Act. She went on to win the New Artist of 2020 and New Artist of the Year at the 46 People's Choice Awards and the 2020 American Music Awards, respectively. Billboard ranked Doja Cat number 5 on both the Top New Artist of 2020 and Top Female Artist of 2020 charts. She ranked a top Rolling Stones list of the 10 biggest breakthrough artists of 2020, following a 300% increase in her on-demand audio streams in the US. Oh, Forbes also named Doja one of the top breakout stars of 2020, while including her on the annual 30 under 30 list. She was also nominated for three different awards at the 63rd annual Grammys. In 2021, she continued to absolutely dominate. She toned down the bright, colorful costumes and pink dyed hair for a muted, mature aesthetic. She released several hits, including Best Friend featuring Saweetie, 34 plus 35 with Megan Thee Stallion and Ariana Grande, as well as Streets, all of which peaked within the top 20 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. In the spring of 2021, Doja released Kiss Me More featuring SZA. This collaboration reached top five in 18 different countries received critical acclaim, and captured Doja her first Grammy for Best Pop Duo slash Group Performance. But with all the success, she claims she didn't enjoy it. I don't have any new music. I just have fun and like just jam and like make some shit. Like I haven't done that in maybe five years, feels like. Mm. Yeah, I made my album, put it out. But that's like a requirement. Like I had, I have to make that. Like I had to make that album. 
It's easy to understand musicians can experience burnout due to demanding schedules, late night performances, long rehearsals, frequent travel, repetitive interviews. There is an intense pressure to consistently deliver high quality performances, whether in live settings or in the studio. Her saying she had to make her album led people to believe there was drama with her and Dr. Luke. Maybe she felt a lack of control over her career. Her saying that she hasn't made music for fun led people to believe her label wanted her to make formulaic pop music so they can bring in millions. This pressure, combined with the endless amount of scrutiny and negativity online, having to constantly apologize for wrongdoings, likely made Doja feel like this whole music industry is smoke and mirrors. Her potential descent into madness was beginning. Are you drinking water? In March of 2020, I'm hungry! I don't want water, I want food! Traveled to Paraguay for their annual Asuncionico festival, which was canceled upon arrival due to severe weather conditions which included flooding and thunderstorms. Doja's hotel location was leaked and fans, eager to see their favorite musician, piled up outside the hotel hoping for her to come out. Eventually, fans grew frustrated when Doja failed to acknowledge them, both in person and on social media. <laughs> While fans aren't entitled to Doja's time outside of when she's scheduled to perform, her seemingly self-absorbed tweets the following day caused a justified uproar on social media. The next day, Doja checked out of her hotel and tweeted, There was a storm in Paraguay. The show got cancelled. When I left the next morning, there wasn't one person outside the hotel waiting for me. After a flurry of backlash, she mm -hmm. said, I don't give a Followed by, the ain't for me, so I'm out. Y'all take care before changing her Twitter name to I Quit. Her reaction to this situation that was totally out of her control either proves one, she is legitimately sick and tired of the pressure of this industry, or two, she is just a snobby, childish brat ungrateful for her career. Mm. Doja's response to criticism has always been the same since day one. She would initially respond sarcastically, and when that response garnered more criticism, she'd finally take the situation seriously and issue a formal apology. However, the secondary apologies bold, always yeah. felt insincere, since her genuine feelings toward the topic were always displayed during those initial responses. Which brings us to our next controversy where she made a huge deal out of nothing. Uh -oh. Doja DM'd Noah Schnapp, the 17-year-old star of Stranger Things, to get the attention of Joseph Quinn, another cast member who she had been lusting over on Twitter. Noah posted the DMs thinking it was a silly joke, only for Doja to get really angry about it. That Noah did that, like went and posted a private conversation between me and him, is so unbelievable. Is she on TikTok? What the fuck? Ooh, got me feeling like a cowgirl. Let me ride it. What the fuck? I'm gonna start doing TikTok live, chat. Fuck that. Be like socially unaware and whack. You know what I mean? Like that's like borderline snake. That's like weasel. That's what I'm saying. It's not that deep. It's just that he's like a very dumb kid. Doja assumed people would automatically take her side since Noah exposed their private messages. However, many people saw it as her trashing an innocent 17-year-old. What she said in the DMs was already public knowledge, and when Twitter <clears throat> users told her that she was overreacting to this small conflict, she played the victim and responded in an insincere, sarcastic tone. Y'all are so cringe and lame and nobody wants to hang with you. That's why y'all be on here unironically writing replies that makes you mad. Doja is clearly fed up with the <laughs> negativity that comes with fame. Whether her controversies are self-inflicted or not, she was done with the expectations, done with petty drama, done with apologies, Can't be done mad trying at that. to appease anyone but herself. Can't be mad and at now that. it was her turn to control the narrative. She started by shaving her head bald. Oh no. Then she went on Instagram Live and shaved her eyebrows. During the live, she said, I feel like I was never supposed to have hair anyway. Whenever female celebrities randomly shave their head, people quickly assume that they have gone crazy, especially after the world witnessed Britney Spears infamously shave her head while having a mental oh, breakdown shit. in 2007. But when she attended Paris Fashion Week, people second-guessed her intentions. Doja collaborated with makeup artists. I don't know. It kind of feels like she she had, she had thinks there's expectations on... Oh, there is. There's expectations on her you know what i mean and on her image and i feel like she's just kind of fucking crumbling and breaking that shit down just because you know what i mean it's kind of just like a fuck you like you don't run my shit you feel me because like chat i mean if, if you thought the internet ran your life you would do everything to kind of just like fuck you you know what i mean i don't know it, it's kind of like the only thing i don't like bro i'm not gonna lie to you is that whole demonic shit stay away from me with that i'm gonna be honest stay away from me bro. That's scary. Pat McGrath to create a strapless red dress while she was covered head to toe in 30,000 crimson red crystals. Ew. The look took almost five hours to complete. And while some people shrugged it off as just another crazy fashion choice for the sake of shock value, 
Others made Illuminati conspiracy theories, that she was imitating Lucifer and this was nothing more than symbolism for the demonic realities of the entertainment industry. You could even say Doja's fashion antics are similar to the many stunts Lady Gaga pulled back in the early 2000s. Then again, they said that Gaga was in the Illuminati as well. Little did we know, putting together a creative or potentially shocking ensemble Ooh. for Fashion Week became one of the least bizarre things Doja does. <laughs> she Doja has eyelashes she on, on her eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> turning to her rap roots for her upcoming fourth studio album. She wanted to diverge from the pink and soft things and pop and glittery sounds Ooh. that defined her career up until now. Her song Attention piqued some interest in the rap world, but fans who'd become accustomed to Doja's pop records were expressing their disappointment on social media, leading to Doja tweeting, My comment section on IG used to only be positivity because I was doing what everyone wanted me to do and I love that I can see through all the bull now. She clarified that it wasn't anything personal, but was discontent cranking out digestible pop hits for children on Twitter to get into fights about. Mm. She tweeted, Planet Her and Hot Pink were cash grabs, and y'all fell for it. Now I can go disappear somewhere and touch grass with my loved ones on an island while y'all weep for mediocre pop. People Yeesh! Talking shit- Okay, this is what I don't agree with. Talking shit on your fan base is crazy, chat. I be, I mean, I be talking shit on y'all, bro. You feel me? But no, 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 I be talking shit to like the one percent of y'all. To be honest, bro, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. The mediocre pop eight, though, true. People were feeling regret for having ever supported her music, but this is the most honest thing Doja has ever said. Most of the music you love is a highly formulaic, soulless product that is scientifically engineered for you to love it. Mm -hmm. Look at what it took for Doja to blow up, making the worst song possible to get attention. It is totally believable to. Think Think Doja just did whatever she could to make some money and be set for life. This is metaphorically what people refer to as selling their soul. But Doja was doing more than metaphors. Oh, no. She showed off a new tattoo of a scaled Hell animal figure no. crossbred with female attributes. The photo went viral on social media with many calling Doja's tattoo demonic. One fan expressed their concern, writing, used to love you, but you clearly sold your soul to the devil. Unfollow. Doja replied, whatever helps you sleep at night. She'd post another tattoo, an antelope Hell skull on no. her wrist. Then she would tattoo a bat skeleton on her back. The allegations regarding her being indoctrinated into the Illuminati or practicing demonic worship only increased as time went on. Her Instagram became filled with cryptic messages Hell and no. spooky videos to roll out her album. She posted very unflattering photos of herself. Her <laughs> album was called Scarlet. She posted what people thought was the album cover, which consisted of her drenched in blood with a stripped down Freemason symbol. She also announced a multi-city tour, which people called a devil worship show. She'd post videos of herself Hell crawling no. in shadows, photo shoots where she was drenched in blood blood and selfies of blood dripping down her nose. She even posted a selfie wearing a shirt with an image of Sam Hyde, an infamous internet troll slash comedian who often incorporates racist or anti-Semitic humor in his bits. The Yikes. image of Hyde brandishing a rifle on Doja's t-shirt is a common meme on social media following mass shootings. Her song, Paint the Town Red, was her leaning more into this overtly demonic Hell art no. song topped the charts in 19 countries. Jesus! It became Doja's second single and first as a solo artist. To I'm just saying, bro. Do you think this is a chat, chat, number one, bro? Okay, okay, motherfuckers at the top are demonic, bro. I don't care what you say, okay? I don't care what y'all say, okay? If there is good in this world, there's also evil. Charts in 19 countries. It became Doja's second single and first as a solo artist to top the Billboard Hot 100. Hell Paint no. the Town Red made history by becoming the first solo female rap song in Spotify history to top the platform's global and US top 50 charts and the fastest solo female rap song to amass 100 million streams. Turns out devil imagery is still an effective marketing strategy. If the signs weren't obvious enough though, Doja began teasing a promotional single titled Demons. In promotional photos uploaded to Instagram, Doja can be seen dressed up as a demon. Hell the music no. video further cemented Doja's transformation from the Jesus to something straight out of a horror film. Some people are praising Doja, that she is finally being herself. She's finally free of all the expectations of the music industry and doesn't have to live up to unattainable beauty standards. You could be, bitch, you can be free from beauty standards, okay? You could be free from expectations, motherfucker. You are, you are literally portraying a demon, a demonic figure, bro. Get the f out of here. I am not, hell no, hell no. 
Some people think what Doja is doing here is mocking the people who think an artist has to sell their soul to make it into the industry. You have to remember she is an expert internet troll, crawling out from the deepest depths of 4chan. She knows all of this imagery will cause controversy. Yeah. She knows she will get news coverage and have outraged parents calling for her music and concerts to be banned. She knows there will be conspiracy theories regardless, so she could be ironically Hell presenting no. herself as a devil worshipper to make people think she has gone insane. Is this an extremely corny and overused art style for artists? Yes. Is it actually an Illuminati PSYOP? Maybe. Did it work? Not really. Doja's fourth oh. studio album, Scarlet, debuted at number four on the Hot 200, moving 72,000 album equivalent units. In comparison, Planet Her debuted at number two and sold 109,000 units. Damn. Despite being on track to be the highest selling female pop star in the world, Doja potentially scared her audience away. Hell yeah, she did. F*** out of here. Do you not see that, bitch? Shit, this was literally her. She said, hold on. Like, get the f out of here, dude. Okay. I'm sorry. That's not cool at all. I don't. I don't find that cool, chat.